uh, my third lecture on uh, multicollinearity. Uh, the problem of uh, multicollinearity exists uh, when uh, two or uh, more regressor variables are dependent uh, or uh, you can say that when two or more uh, random uh, regressor variables are uh, linearly dependent. Okay. So, uh, in the last class, uh, we, um, we talked about uh, the different technique, uh, techniques to detect uh, multicollinearity. Uh, we learned uh, uh, about uh, examination of correlation matrix and also we learned uh, about the you know eigen system analysis uh, of x prime x matrix or the correlation matrix okay so uh, first i'll recall the eigen system analysis uh, we learned in the last uh, in the previous class uh, well what we do here is that uh, we first uh, uh, compute the k minus 1 eigen values of the x prime x matrix and then uh, we compute the condition number which is uh, uh, k denoted by k equal to lambda max by uh, lambda minimum and uh, the larger value of k uh, indicates the severe problem with multicollinearity. As a general rule, you know, this is what uh, we talked uh, in the last class. Uh, if k is less than 100, then uh, that indicates no serious problem with uh, multicollinearity. Um, if k is between 100 and uh, 1000, then that indicates uh, moderate, moderate to uh, strong multicollinearity. But uh, if k is uh, greater, greater than uh, 1000, uh, then that indicates a severe problem with uh, multicollinearity. Okay. So, this is uh, how we, uh, I know, condition number is uh, used to detect uh, the multicollinearity. Uh, the advantage of uh, uh, this uh, eigen system an analysis is that it not only detect a multicollinearity, uh, it can measure the number of linear dependences in the um, in the correlation matrix. Okay, and uh, also you know uh, it can determine or it can identify the nature of uh, linear dependences between the regressors. So, uh, for that you know uh, what we do is that we, we compute uh, the condition indices. Uh, here is the condition indices uh, k j, uh, k j is associated with the jth regressor. Uh, so, k, k j is lambda maximum by lambda j right. And, uh, the number of kj greater than 1000 uh, is a useful measure of the number of linear dependences in uh, x prime x okay and uh, then uh, i illustrated this result using the webster data uh, this is the webster data i uh, talked about in the previous class uh, we have uh, six regressors, the response variable, right? And uh, I refer this data as uh, you know uh, Webster data. Now, the eigenvalues uh, for the uh, eigenvalues of x prime x matrix or the correlation matrix uh, for the uh, webster data is uh, here you know lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 lambda 5 lambda 6 and uh, the smallest eigenvalue is this <coughs> is this one 
which is uh, close to 0. Now, we compute the condition number. See, the condition number is uh, 2188, which is greater than 1000. So, this uh, condition number indicates uh, uh, the presence of severe uh, multicollinearity in the wave star data. So, next uh, what we will do is that uh, we will compute the condition indices also. Uh, since we know the uh, eigenvalues, we can compute the condition indices, uh, right. So, the condition indices are What is condition indices? Kj, Kj is equal to lambda max by lambda j. Okay, so K1 is uh, lambda max is 2.4288 by lambda 1 is basically maximum. So lambda 1 is 2.4288, which is equal to 1. So, K2 is uh, lambda max which is equal to 2.4288 by lambda 2 which is equal to 1.5462 equal to 1.57. Similarly, you compute K3 uh, which is equal to lambda max by lambda 3 uh, is equal to 7.88. K4 is uh, lambda max by uh, lambda 4 that is uh, you know, 2.4288 by lambda 4 is 0 0.9221 which is equal to 2.633. Okay, so, I did uh, some mistake here. Uh, this is K3, this is K3, uh, this is K5. Uh, okay, anyway, you can compute what is K3 and then K4 is equal to 3.05, K5 is equal to this quantity and K6 is equal to 2188.11. Okay. Now, uh, we know uh, that uh, here only one condition index exceed 1000, right? That is K6. So, we conclude that there is only one near linear dependence in the data. Because you know, we uh, uh, I mentioned before that the number of kj uh, greater than 1000 that measures the number of uh, linear dependencies in the data. And since here only one kj that is k6 is greater than 1000, that is why uh, the number of linear dependence or dependencies is equal to 1 only. Well, now, uh, what uh, will I mean? Uh, this technique has a lot of advantages. Like, you know, it it not only detect the presence of multicollinearity, it can uh, measure the number of linear dependences in the data, 
and also it can identify the nature of the linear dependencies. Okay. So, uh, now uh, we will explain that portion here. Eigen system analysis can also be used to identify the nature of linear dependences. in data. Okay. So, uh, let me explain this portion first. The correlation matrix x prime a x may be decomposed as you know x prime x you can write or decompose as x prime x is equal to t d t where D is is a diagonal matrix whose main diagonal elements are the eigenvalues. Okay. So, D equal to diagonal lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k minus 1. Okay. And t is equal to t is a uh, k minus 1 cross k minus 1 matrix and uh, whose co the columns of this T matrix, uh, they are T 1, T 2, T k minus 1. So, here this T i is uh, the Eigen vector associated with lambda i, okay, uh, where T i is equal to a 1, a 2, a k minus 1 is the Eigen vector associated with eigenvalue lambda i. Right? Okay. So, this is the decomposition of the correlation matrix. Now, if uh, lambda j if the eigenvalue lambda i is close to 0, the elements
of the associated eigenvector that is Ti describe the nature of linear dependence okay so the nature of this linear dependence is like a1 x1 a2 x2 plus a k minus 1 x k minus 1 is equal to 0 so this uh, coefficient of the regressors uh, regressor variables a1 a2 a k minus 1 they are basically the elements of ti so uh, ti uh, this is the eigen vector associated with uh, lambda i and lambda is very close to 0. Uh, so, T i is the Eigen vector associated with lambda i and T i is equal to a 1 a 2 a k minus 1. Right. So, Okay, uh, so maybe just I will just give the um, little bit motivation behind this, you know, uh, if, if lambda i is close to 0, uh, then the condition index associated with lambda i is large, I mean that would be uh, greater than 1000. And uh, course, I mean, uh, and then you will get a linear. Uh, okay, you will get one linear uh, dependence between the regressor variables uh, associated with lambda i. So that's why you know, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, also you know that uh, the number of condition indices. Uh, greater than 1000 that measures the uh, number of linear dependences in the data and corresponds to corresponding to each lambda i uh, for which the condition index is greater than 1000 you will get a linear dependence or you will get you can identify a uh, linear dependence uh, between the regressor coefficient uh, between the regressors. Okay. Uh, let me explain, I mean uh, illustrate this thing using the Webster data. Okay. Here the smallest eigenvalue. lambda 6 which is equal to 0 0.0011 and the associated Eigen vector that is uh, say T 6 is equal to minus 0 0.447 minus 0 0.421 minus 0 0.541 minus 0 0.573 minus 0 0.006 minus 0 0.002. So, this is the associated Eigen vector uh, correspond, correspond, corresponds to lambda 6 and then the nature of uh, linear dependence uh, is minus 0.447 x1 minus 0.421 x2 minus 0.541 x3 minus 0.573 
x4 minus 0 0.006 x5 minus 0 0.002 x6 equal to 0. And from here, you know, since these two are very small, uh, we can ignore uh, x5 and x6 from this uh, uh, equation and uh, this implies that x1 is equal to minus 0 0.941 x2 minus 1.21 x3 minus 1.28 x4. Okay, so, this is the uh, linear uh, dependence between the regressor x1, x2 and x3 and x4 uh, and this linear dependence is associated with lambda 6, right. And uh, if you have more Eigen uh, value which are uh, close to 0 uh, corresponds to each lambda i, I mean, which are very small or which are close to 0, you will get a uh, linear dependence like this. Okay? So, what we learn from this uh, Eigen vector uh, Eigen system analysis is that uh, it can detect the presence of multicollinearity it can measure the number of linear dependencies in the data and also it can identify the nature of linear dependencies in the data. Okay. So, next we move to the variance uh, inflation factor. This is another way to uh, you know to detect uh, the presence of multicollinearity. Okay. This is called variance inflation factors. Okay. So, first uh, we will recall the variance of I3 regressors. Variance of the ith regressor coefficient i mean uh, variance of ith regressor coefficients mean variance of the least square estimate of ith regressor coefficient beta i hat we know that this one is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse the i i th element of x prime x inverse right now uh, you know this can be uh, it can be proved that this uh, the i i th element is equal to uh, 1 by 1 minus r i square sigma square here right now, what is this R i square? Uh, R i square is the coefficient of multiple determination when x i is regressed on the remaining regressors. Right? Now, see if 
the ith regressor x i is uh, nearly orthogonal to the remaining regressor here uh, you know this nearly orthogonal i mean that if the ith regressor is uh, uh, independent of the remaining regressors then ri square is is small and 1 by 1 minus ri square is close to unity. Well, so uh, the meaning of this one is that you know x i is uh, nearly orthogonal to the remaining regressors. That means, uh, x i is uh, independent of the remaining regressors. That means, there is no uh, linear dependence associated with x i. Okay? I mean x i can cannot be represented in terms of the linear combination of the other regressors. Uh, then the coefficient of multiple determination when you are regressing uh, x i on the remaining regressors, uh, the coefficient of multiple, multiple determination will be small and uh, the value of 1 minus 1 by 1 minus r square is uh, close to unity and the variance of beta i hat is going to be sigma square close to sigma square. Now, uh, if x i is nearly linearly dependent on some subset of the remaining regressor r i square value uh, will be near to close to 1. Okay. R i square is near unity and 1 by 1 minus R i square is large. So, the meaning of this you know x i is uh, linearly dependent on some subset of the remaining regressors. That means, there is a linear dependence between the between x i and some subset of the remaining regressors. Uh, if some linear dependence is there between x i and some subset of the remaining regressors, that means, uh, x i can be represented in terms of as a linear combination of some subset of the remaining regressors. Uh, well, so the which implies that r i square which is the coefficient of multiple determination when x i is regressed on the remaining regressors is uh, will be large and, and that will be close to unity and, and that implies that the value of 1 by 1 minus r i square is large. Uh, that ultimately you know if x i if there is a linear dependence in the data between the regressors then uh, the variance of beta i hat is going to be large because this factor is going to be large well so this factor you know uh, this 1 by 1 minus r i square uh, well let me write here so variance of beta i hat is equal to sigma square 
into 1 by 1 minus r i square right and this quantity this factor uh, no this can be viewed as the factor by which the variance of beta i hat is increased due to linear dependence among the regressors. Right. Well, so if if there is a linear dependence between x i and uh, a subset of the remaining regressors, then the value of this is large. Okay, then the vari variance of beta i hat is also large. Now, if x i is independent of the remaining regressors, or I said that it is if it is uh, nearly orthogonal to the remaining regressors. Then, then this value, this factor is close to 1 and the variance of beta i hat is, uh, is almost equal to sigma square, right. So, uh, the variance inflation factor V i f associated with regressor x i is defined by v i f i which is equal to 1 by 1 minus r i square. And obviously, uh, large value of value of V i f i indicates possible multicollinearity. associated with x i. The meaning of this one is that you know if uh, multi collinearity associated with x i that means uh, this would if, uh, if this is large that means uh, there is a linear dependence between uh, x i and uh, a subset of the remaining regressors. Then only the value of this one is going to be large. So, the large value of V i f i indicates possible multicollinearity associated with the regressor x i. Okay. Now, in general, you know V i f i greater than equal to 5 indicates possible multicollinearity problem and uh, V i f i greater than or equal to 10 indicates that multicollinearity is almost 
certainly a problem. Okay, so this is uh, how uh, the variance uh, inflation factor associated uh, with the ith regressor uh, can be used to detect the multicollinearity. Okay, so this uh, this technique, you know, variance inflation factor can uh, determine uh, can detect uh, the problem of multicollinearity. But any, I mean, of course, it it can't uh, identify the nature of multicollinearity. So, uh, so uh, Eigen system analysis is a better technique uh, because uh, it can detect the multicollinearity. It can measure the number of linear dependencies in the data, and also it can identify the nature of linear dependencies in the data okay so next uh, we'll be talking about uh, uh, you know uh, if if you can if you detect that the, you know there is multicollinearity in the data then uh, how to deal with uh, multicollinearity okay so we'll we'll be talking about uh, several techniques uh, to to deal with uh, multicollinearity right so dealing with The first technique is you know collect additional data. Well, uh, you know collecting additional data you know, has been suggested uh, as the best method of dealing with multicollinearity. Okay, so this is uh, perhaps the best uh, uh, way to deal with uh, multicollinearity. What it says is that, let me uh, illustrate uh, this one little bit. Uh, suppose you have, uh, you are in the multiple linear regression model and uh, suppose you have only two regressors x1 and x2 and the response variable y and uh, you have n data points okay so you have some data you have n data now uh, you have detected that you know uh, the multicollinearity exists uh, in this uh, data that means uh, here we have only two regressors uh, that means x1 and x2 they are linearly dependent so what we do is that we uh, we collect uh, some more data say uh, another m data uh, to break the existing multicollinearity in the present data okay so what we do is that sub, so these two are uh, these two uh, regressors they are linearly dependent that's why uh, that is the i mean uh, multicollinearity exist because of the linear dependence between these two regressors now uh, this additional data, data
should be collected in a manner to break up the multicollinearity in the existing data. Okay, I hope you understood that you know initially you have n data points and uh, here you know x1 and x2 they are linearly uh, dependent. So, you collect uh, another some more additional data say m data points in such a way you know when you combine uh, the complete set of data you know n plus m data uh, then x and x1 and x2 are not anymore linearly dependent. You have to collect uh, the data uh, in a manner to break up the multicollinearity in the existing data. Okay. So, this is uh, you know one way to deal with uh, multicollinearity or to break the multicollinearity in the existing data. Okay, you know, but uh, in many inst instances, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, not possible in practice. Uh, next, uh, we will talk about one uh, more uh, technique to deal with uh, multicollinearity uh, that is uh, called remove regressors from the model. Okay. Here now if two regressors are linear linearly dependent it means they contain redundant information. So, uh, what we can do is that you know if uh, two regressors for example, x 1 and x 2 uh, they are linearly dependent may be for example, say uh, x 1 is equal to twice of x 2, uh, but then uh, I mean basically they I mean the information regarding x 2 is uh, redundant right. So, what we can do is that thus we can pick one regressor to keep in the model and discard the other one right so this basically suggests you know if if you have two regressors which are linearly dependent uh, then uh, you can pick uh, one regressor to keep in the model and you can remove the other one you can remove say for example x2 from this uh, from this mo uh, model right uh, if say for example, x 1, x 2 and x 3 are linearly dependent, then eliminating one regressor variable may 
helpful to reduce the effect of multicollinearity, but the problem is that you know if uh, say for, uh, for example, x 1 you have 3 regressors x 1, x 2 and x 3 uh, in the model and or maybe more regressors, but uh, x 1, x 2, x 3 they are uh, linearly independent. Then maybe you can remove one regressor for example, x 3 from the uh, from the model, but uh, to reduce the you know to reduce the uh, effect of multi collinearity, but uh, if x 3 it might happen that you know x 3 the uh, the regressor which you have removed that x 3 might be you know uh, significant to explain the variability in the response variable. In that case you know uh, uh, this removing one regressor may damage the predictive, uh, predictive power of the model. Well, so, uh, that is why it says that you know eliminating uh, regressor to reduce uh, multicollinearity may damage the predictive power of the model. So, this is one way uh, you know uh, to uh, deal with uh, uh, the problem of multicollinearity and uh, the other technique is uh, Collapse variables. So it says that you know you combine if if there are uh, linear dependence between two or more than two uh, regressors, you combine two or more variables which are linearly dependent into a single composite So, basically this uh, collapse variables it, it says that uh, if you have uh, linear dependence between uh, say two or more than two regressors, uh, then uh, you can uh, combine you know those, uh, those regressors by a composite regressor variable. Okay? So, these are the uh, techniques to deal with uh, multicollinearity. So, one is you know collecting uh, more data point and the other one is uh, uh, removing one regressor uh, from the model and uh, combining the regressors which are linearly dependent. Okay. So, that is uh, like uh, okay. So, in this uh, module we have learned uh, what is uh, multicollinearity and you know this multicollinearity is the name of a problem in multiple regression model uh, well so the problem the problem of multicollinearity uh, arises when two or more uh, regressor variables are um, linearly dependent right and uh, 
and uh, we have learnt you know how to how to detect uh, multicollinearity if it exists in the data and also uh, first uh, you know we, we learned about uh, you know how how what are the problems due to multicollinearity and then we have learned uh, you know wha how to detect multicollinearity if it exists in the data and uh, also we learned how to deal with multicollinearity so that's all for today thank you for your attention